hey guys good morning today we're gonna do uh, online dating horror stories from mr. nightmare that's right this is mr. nightmare's reaction time as you can read over here I have designed this cup especially for such uh, you know event for such videos because to be honest I uh, like ever since he had uh, you know I have seen his uh, one of his video like long back ago and I was pretty much uh, impressed with his work so I made this cup this is Mr. Nightmare's logo and you have this called Mr. Nightmare and horror stories and over here reaction time see you can see over here reaction time and you have this small uh, you know my sign over here it says 3k youtuber current i'm not sure whether you guys can see it but you can buy it you can buy it like if you're interested you can buy it and uh, if you would need to know more about the information you know what kind of material is this and so forth and the price and all the stuff you can follow or buy instagram it's called pixta it will be right over here it will pop it right over there somewhere in the screen I will do that and you know what let's not waste more time and let's just dive in for the uh, online horror dating stories online horror dating stories yes excited to see and I will have my uh, you have cashew nuts you have almonds you have I don't know walnuts yeah cashew nuts and walnuts and almonds so yeah just just a morning snack for me Story one. After breaking up with my first girlfriend when I was 21, I had been single for about a year. It was the first time I had been single in years, so it took some getting used to again. Eventually I decided it was time to get back into the dating scene, so I started downloading a bunch of dating apps. One of the apps I down- Even I was, you know, um, one of the- crucial uh, situation you know like I my ex was like you know like we had a breakup and all and then uh, after six months or so I started to you know install some online apps like for example tinder and so forth so eventually over there you know it's you can't be sure whether that person is you know a really a female or a male or just you know a social media manager trying to promote his applications it's kind of hard to believe such applications, man. But anyway, let's see what this guy, you know, face loaded was OK Cupid, which was the one I used the most. I vibed the most with one girl I matched with named Brenna. Based on her interests and biography, she was into a lot of things I was into. She was a very pretty, light skinned black girl. We had talked for a while and agreed that I would pick her up at her place to go out and get food. I pulled up to her house on the west side of town at 630. It was about 10 minutes after sunset, so it was really getting dark. I texted Brenna, and she took a while to answer. I sat in my car actually staring at the conversation for a while, waiting for the texting bubble to come up. When it finally did, she responded saying, Hey, sorry about that. My brother's going to meet you outside. He's being really annoying and protective. I showed her how upset I was and how much I didn't want to have to meet her brother, but she just kept saying, Sorry, he's forcing me. I saw the front door of the house I was parked in front of open, and a guy came out walking over to the driveway while looking at my car. I got out to go over and meet him, realizing he towered over me. Another thing I quickly noted was his skin was significantly more dark than Brenna's, to the point that they wouldn't even seem related at all. Okay, now that's not, uh, that's not true, man. Um... It's not about the skins, man. It's about, uh, you know, maybe uh, like sh uh, her f mother might be, you know, light skin and her father will be like dark, dark skin, something like that. But <laughs> I don't know. Like I felt, uh, uh, you know, funny right there, you know, see the way how he shook he my hand. It wouldn't even seem related at all. He shook my hand and significantly more dark than Brenna's to the point that they wouldn't even seem related at all. <laughs> He shook my hand and introduced himself as Will. 
There didn't seem to be anything off-putting about him at first glance, and he seemed friendly enough. He started going on about how he just wanted to make sure a trustworthy, stand-up guy was about to take out his sister. We talked for a little, and he seemed normal enough, I guess. He finally asked me to come inside to meet Brenna. He led me into the house and shut the door behind me. He told me to wait right there in the living room while he went upstairs to get Brenna. As he went... The quickest r r red flag you can see over here is... Um... You know, this house is so... There's no light. You can see, right? Like, see, the half of the room is, like, fucking dark. And, um... I don't care whether it's night or, or you know, or daylight. I need a light inside the room in order to feel safe. And upstairs, I looked into the living room to realize there were two men sitting on the couch both giving me a certain kind of look I just didn't like. Oh. I said what's up to them. One of them just slightly nodded his head, but just barely. Will from upstairs called down that he's trying to find Brenna, which was odd. I turned to look at the room adjacent to the living room, which was the dining room. To my surprise, there was another man sitting at the dining room table, also staring at me. Instinctively, I stepped back and reached for the doorknob without even turning my back to the three men. One of them screamed, grab him, as they saw me reach for the door. Holy shit. At that point, I flung the door open and ran to my car. They weren't far behind. In fact, I made it into my car with only maybe a second to spare before they were outside my doors, kicking and hitting my windows, trying to break them. I was able to drive away down the block. But keep in mind, this was on a public residential road. I have no idea how it didn't cause more of a scene out on the street. I made it home to tell my mom and dad what happened, still out of breath. The part where you guys have to share your parents is actually the most important uh, thing. If you don't share your, um, you know, like for example, this guy has to face, uh, you know, some men trying to kidnap him. If you, you know, uh, keep, I mean, kept that as a secret at the entire life, you will re regret it. You will feel like, you know, like as if like I haven't, you know, um, told something which was like you know uh, with his uh, almost he was like choked to death if you if you won't share this to anyone they won't even know you know what's happening one day you disappear and then they all are like I don't know why what happened to him if you would have said that that you know there were men trying to do so and so in that address and if you disappear obviously your parents first uh, doubt will go to the, uh, that men with, with that address given, correct? So you have to, you know, track down your trust level uh, with your parents, you know. I share everything with my parents, with my mom. Everything. Not my born sites. That will be awkward. They were in shock and almost didn't believe it, and they recommended I call the police. I did. I reported the house and the incident to the police. Nice. One of the neighbors vouched for my story anonymously because they saw the group attacking my car when I escaped. Police arrested three of the four men I saw in the house, one of them being Will, or whatever his real name was. The other guy couldn't be found or identified. I didn't stop using dating apps after that. Huh? I was just a lot more cautious from there on. Okay. Story 2 At the time of this story, I had already met a total of three people on Match.com. It didn't really work out with two of them, and the third one I dated for four months. After my breakup, I wanted to take a break from commitment and just find something more casual. And so, I matched with a girl named Kylie, who I got along with decently well on the app. She seemed down to just come over to my apartment and hang out for the night. She showed up about half an hour later and seemed really quiet in person. We hung out in my room in the upstairs of my apartment for most of the night. We just talked for a while while watching TV in the background. There were a bunch of awkward silences, but I did my best to fill them with new conversations. In the back of my mind the whole time I was thinking, are we gonna kiss? Does she expect me to move in for the kiss? How do I go about it? But hours of talking later, 
I started to realize there was something wrong with this girl. She became increasingly more emotionless. She was staring off across the room as she'd talk slowly, talking about increasingly deep and dark things. Then she said something surprising. She thanked me for allowing her to sleep over. Apparently when I said she could come hang out for the night, she meant to literally stay the night. She got off the bed and asked what blanket she could use for the floor. Homeless people, dude. Maybe. I'm not sure. Because the way she said, thank you for, you know, for the stay over and all. A red flag. Oh. I grabbed a couple blankets and pillows and made a sort of bed for her on the floor. She thanked me and then laid down on her side facing away from me. I guessed she was ready to go to sleep. I turned off the TV and closed my eyes. We didn't say a single word to each other, and I have to admit, it was very awkward. Okay, I will tell you guys, you know, how I sleep. I don't sleep like this. Not like that. I will have a fucking light. You know, um... Okay, I can't show you guys that light. Maybe a lamp light. I need some sort of, you know, a dim light, um... Whenever, you know, I try to go to sleep because I don't want, uh, you know, that... <coughs> Uh, this is my dream, you know, like when I turn off the lights, eh, the entire light, you know, when I'm trying to sleep. I don't want someone's dark figure's face right over here when I just, you know, get up, I mean, open my eyes like that. I don't want that. If that's a face, just I just need some light just to see, hey, I mean, who is that guy or a girl or it. I don't want, you know, a dark full face. No way. If that person wants to kill me, at least I want to see him or his face. I'm like, oh, okay, that's you. Uh -uh. Like that. I don't want, you know, that thing to be a totally mystery part, man, you know, in, in, in my entire life. Whether I go to heaven or hell. I fell asleep probably half an hour after shutting the TV. But I awoke randomly in the middle of the night. I sat up and looked down at the floor and was able to see that Kylie didn't appear to be laying on the floor anymore. Oh. I flipped on the lamp and looked around the room. She wasn't anywhere, actually. But just then, I heard a voice downstairs. It sounded like it could be Kylie. All the walls in my apartment are paper thin, so noise travels quite easily throughout it. I quietly left my room and stood at the foot of the top of the stairs, listening for what Kylie could be saying. All the lights upstairs were off, but she was talking in a low voice. I just couldn't tell for sure what exactly she was saying. I figured she was on the phone with someone, but still, I went downstairs to check. I stepped into the dark kitchen, and there she was. But she wasn't on the phone. She was just creepily sitting in one of the chairs facing the wall. She seemed to still be muttering to herself. I was frozen. All I could say was, Kylie? She turned her head to me slowly, looked at me for a few seconds, then turned back to face the wall. I went upstairs quickly to my room and crawled into my bed to call my dad. I had to call at least three times before he finally picked up, obviously sounding concerned. Okay, you know what, I don't want to listen what's gonna happen after, uh, after, uh, after this because uh, I might um, encounter some uh, girls screaming and all. Which I don't, oh, I don't like that part, man. Uh, because I don't want that audio, you know, to loop in my head again and again, like ah, ah, like a fucking engine or some shit. You know what? Fuck it. I told him in a quiet panic that some random girl from online was staying the night. And now she was sitting in my kitchen muttering to herself like a crazy person. He sounded confused as hell, but told me to call 911 if she seemed like she was having some kind of episode to safely get her out of there. Then I looked up and noticed a figure standing by my- Oh man! Why? Why? You just talked about my fucking dream boy. My fucking nightmare dream, man. No, no. Should I...
should I just do this? Ah, uh, fuck it. The bedroom door in the dark. It was Kylie. All I saw was the outline of her skinny body. She stood there for maybe 10 seconds. All I heard was my dad on the other end of the phone saying hello over and over. Hello? The next thing I saw was the silhouette of Kylie at my door suddenly charge at me and- Oh no 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 no, she's gonna scream, she's gonna scream. My bed, as she began to scream. I told you. She lunged at me and put her hands around my throat, trying to choke me. However, I was able to quickly overpower her and hold her down against the bed. I screamed at my dad to call the cops. I was able to drag the insane girl downstairs by the time the cops came. The cops took her away to fill out a few documents. I think it's safe to say that you should always meet people from websites and apps in a safe, public place first. Yeah, public place is actually a good uh, start right there. I've been single most of my life. However, I've used apps like Tinder or Badu just for fun for a long time. Have I met some weird people? Yes. But nothing could have prepared me for what happened in February of 2014. Dead of winter, the time of year that these apps are perhaps most useful if you're just looking for casual fun when you can't have fun outside. I was using the app Badu, and at any given moment I would be messaging at least 5 different girls, only because I'd know 9 out of 10 conversations would end up dying. One conversation kept going strong, however. The girl's name was Maria. Maria. Every time I'd hear that triple note ding and notification from Badu saying, Maria sent you a new message, I'd actually get a little excited. I asked if she was down to hang out tonight. She wrote back yeah and asked for my address. I gave it to her without hesitation. She said she'd be right back. I said wait, give me your number so we could text. But she didn't respond. After a few minutes, it said she was offline. The app did that when someone wasn't active for a few minutes. So I figured be back soon, and She's I patiently for waited you, while going back to watching TV. I kept routinely checking the app to see if she came back online, but she stayed offline. An hour passed, and now it was getting a bit late for her to even come over. Plus, I was getting kind of tired, so the idea was kind of shot. I went to bed. That's it, that's the biggest mistake. The next morning, I oh. woke up early. God damn, man, not the fucking window. I can definitely say a fucking face will come to now. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch out. It was raining outside, and it was still a little dark. I checked the clock, and it was 6.30 in the morning. I was grateful it wasn't like 11, and I could get back to sleep. I did, however, pick up my phone to check for any new text and junk. I saw a few notifications from Badu, actually. Maria had messaged me a few times. I opened the app as I rubbed my eyes. That's an uh, image. She said, hey, I'm coming now at like 3 a.m. Then at like 3.20 a.m. it said, I'm here. At 4 a.m. it said, I'm watching you. Uh -huh. I noticed it said she was online too. And then the triple tone sound beeped, meaning I got a new message from her. It said, how did you sleep? My heart started to race, and I felt a feeling of unease in my chest, and in my head. I right away looked out the window. I told you, bro, I don't want to see this. To see if anyone was hiding in the bushes outside. Then I shut the blind. Why you have to do that, you fucking cunt? I typed back, who the hell is this? Ten seconds later, I got the disturbing message, check your closet and find out. Oh, shit! I looked across my room, to the closet door that I know was closed last night. The closet door that was now cracked open. Okay, you know, I'm sorry to pause again and again, but I'm kind of, um, pretty much, pretty much scared. Hey, <laughs> I was so shook, I almost couldn't breathe. Then, the door pushed open ever so slowly, revealing the dark inside of the closet. I started screaming for my dad. I had to run past the closet to leave my room, but as I got to my dad's room to find the bed empty, I had completely forgotten he wasn't home for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, you have to deal with it alone. My older brother was home though, and he came rushing to see what the commotion was. Cool, not a which problem. I told him to check the closet with me. When we checked the closet, there wasn't a single trace of anyone having been in there. Then a cold breeze hit me, and I realized my stupid self didn't lock my window the night before. Uh oh. Things made a little more sense now. I went to the police station to show the messages on the app in hopes they could track the person, but apparently it wasn't that easy. I would need court orders and such in order for Badu to be required to release the information of the user. I refrained from doing anything, however, luckily after a long week of sleeping in fear, nothing happened, and I was able to move on with my life. Great, I just, uh, I'll just be, you know, just uh, go a little bit further, I don't want fucking face to come or something like that. Alright. Cool. So no face has come so far. <laughs> uh but I thought that you know the face might you know pop up like that and you know and then he will text saying hey bro you look cool no nothing like that cool but you know what is a cool part dude is this mug man if you guys need this mug or uh, if you you know want anything customized like from t-shirt to the cup to the coasters and all you know follow uh, somewhere on the screen like you can see that Instagram thing you can follow there. It's my own company. I'm trying to start up my own company So wish me luck and if you guys really if you know find my artwork interesting you can buy it and uh, Yeah Now I will tell you which one was the scariest one story one two or three. I think um, Story uh, story three some sort of yeah okay ah sorry story two story three was okay story two that uh, screaming girl was like a bitch but i hope you enjoyed so far with me if you did you know get scared with that scream uh, hit that like button and if you want to you know comment anything regarding about the reaction uh, thing you can you know just comment down below it can be you know but i need horror uh, reactions only like I, I don't do uh, like I like to do movie uh, trailers and all but horrors uh, like you know kind of my thing so if you think you know there are uh, you know other YouTube container like you know I mean uh, YouTube creator who does you know a good content about horror stories you can you know just comment down below and I will see to it you know I'll give my best till then like share subscribe and sponsor if you want and till then Boom, bada, bim, bada, boom.